Okay, on this video, we're going to briefly be discussing yet another African-American pioneer of the uh, technological revolution that has taken us where we are today in the computer industry. And that is a man who is considered as a video game pioneer by the name of Jerry Lawson, who has passed away recently, uh, last year as a matter of fact, at the age of 70. Let's just read what it says here on digitaltrends.com. That's Jerry Lawson, and that's the um, game that he developed. Jerry Lawson, who was an early video game pioneer and developer of the first cartridge-based video game system, has died at age 70. In these days of portable game systems with Wi-Fi and consoles with motion to sensors, internet connectivity, and integrated Blu-ray drives, it can be hard to remember that the industry had to get its start somewhere. Jerry Lawson, a key figure in the development of home video game systems was one of a handful who jump-started the industry. He died this week at age 70 in Santa Clara, California from complications from diabetes. Lawson was the key engineer behind the Fairfield, Fairchild Channel F console game system. The Channel F was a tremendous commercial success it was quickly eclipsed by Atari systems that hit the market the next year. But it was the first system to use interchangeable ROM cartridges to load games, paving the way not only for Atari, but for innumerable console systems and game developers that followed, including the likes of Nintendo, I'm sorry, Nintendo and Sega. The same basic technology was used as recently as the Nintendo Game Boy Advance Interchangeable cartridges enables a single game system to play multiple titles rather than a single game embedded into a system's ROM or controllers. Now back in the day, if you wanted to get a video game system, the entire console would only be one game. This man, Jerry Lawson, is the one that developed the ROM system where instead of buying a new game for every new game you wanted to play, instead of buying a new console, you could just buy the cartridges which would be interchangeable. And let's just read what, uh, in fact, I'm going to go to a video where Jerry Lawson is discussing it himself. It's a wonderful Silicon Valley. Uh, I was probably one of the first field application engineers used by Fairchild. My primary job was to go around and help clients with engineering problems, design, and applications of semiconductor products. Uh, in those early days, one of the first guys I met, oddly enough, was a guy by the name of Al Alcorn, who was the father of Tom. And I remember in the early days that Al, Nolan Bushnell, and a guy named Ted Dabney had formed a company called Syzygy. That's S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y. And Syzygy, uh, the first development was a Pong game that they dedicated as a coin-op game. And they put it in a pizza parlor in Deer Hall on El Camino in Sunnydale. And lo and behold, it overflowed with coins. At the same time, I was working on a project to build a device which is a coin-operated game that used the microprocessor. A lot of people in the industry swore that a microprocessor couldn't be used in video games, and I knew better. So I accepted the challenge and went out to design one. The name of the game was called Demolition Derby. And some of the unique features of it is that we actually had what we call a coin defeat mode, which was a way of timing the coin as it went through the switch closure to make sure kids didn't use slugs or a wire to trip the switch down the machine. We actually had timed the window and had it programmable, but this slot time <coughs> we maintained in order for the machine to be activated. We also made controls for it that were optically encoded. Um, purposely not this, exactly the same size as an A track, like they resemble an A track a lot. For uh, well, it was not. They were the concept of putting it into the cartridge was not to have it confused for an A track because it would give them enough problems by 
finishing an eight track into the slot. They were purposely made not to follow an eight track. And and they couldn't have been made smaller or bigger or anything like that. They could have been made smaller. But again, the ergonomics of it was to make it handheld and have to perceive value by the size. And really, if they were made to the size that they really were, uh, people would have difficulty in tracking where they are, feeling for them. Would you be interested in, in dumping any of those ROMs to the internet for um, emulation, or like if those Atari Age guys wanted to help you on that, would you be interested in that? Sure. Uh -huh. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about that. When Jerry Lawson came up with the ROM cartridge, there was a lot of flack within the gaming industry because they thought they would lose a lot of revenue. Why? Because, again, in order to buy a video game, the entire console would only be one game. And that is huge. You have to wrap your brain around that. If you wanted a video game, the console itself. In other words, if you had five games, that means you had five consoles. So what he created was the ROM cartridge, and the people in the industry did not like that idea. Number one, they didn't know how to do it. They didn't think it would work. They didn't think it was a good idea. They thought they would lose a lot of revenue because obviously the cartridge would sell for a lot less than the entire console would. What they did not realize at that time, and he did have the foresight and the vision to see this, Jerry Lawson did, was that... Um, whereas if you sell the console itself, uh, someone may have one or two games. If you reduce the price of the games itself, they're going to buy the console. You'll make most of your money by re by selling multiple games. And eventually they're going to have as many games as you can create. Plus it's going to expand the entire industry where there'll be a lot of game developers developing games for our consoles. And there'll be a lot of money to be made on that. So he had the uh, foresight and the vision to see that when other people did not. So I'm going to jump around a little bit. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about uh, Jerry Lawson, the engineer. Gerald Anderson Lawson, born December 1st, 1940, died April 9th, 2011, was an American, okay, fine, an African-American electronic, okay. So he was an African-American electronic engineer known for his work in designing the Fairchild Channel F video game console during development of the Channel F and F in the early mid 70s, Lawson was chief hardware engineer and director of engineering and marketing for Fairchild Semiconductor's video game division. He also founded and ran VideoSoft, a video game development company which made software for the Atari 2600 in the early 1980s as the 2600 had displaced the Channel SF as the top system in the market. Lawson was the sole black member of the Homebrew Computer Club, a group of early computer hobbyists which would produce a number of industry legends including Apple founder Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Lawson also produced one of the earliest arcade games, Demolition Derby, which debuted in a Southern California pizzeria shortly after Pong. Lawson later worked with the Stanford Mentor, Stanford Mentor Program and was preparing to write a book on his career. In March 2011, Lawson was honored as an industry pioneer by the International Game Developers Association. See, this is why I like truth and fact, because it very easily counters the um, Eurocentric garbage that wants to lie and deny about all African-American achievements and uh, basically say it's fantasy. But the, the, the evidence and truth and facts are out there, and that's why I always do thorough research. International Game Developers Association honored him in March 2011. He was honored as an industry pioneer. So I also went to uh, the website for the International Game Developers Association. That is their website there. So you can go to that website yourself, igda.org, and research that uh, fact further. Oh, my goodness. Oh, give me that crap. Um, a lot of stuff we do in gaming we take for granted, and sometimes we don't think about where it had its beginnings. Um, we just lost Jerry Lawson recently, the creator of the video game cartridge. Because of his involvement, we get to enjoy gaming for what it is now and what it will be in the future. Um, this is That's huge. And my hat is off for you for recognizing that the pioneers in any industry affect what is happening today and what's going to happen in the future. So regardless of how much time passes, we have to, we owe a tribute to the pioneers. And in his case, 
Uh, it was a really novel and innovative co innovative concept uh, where that even his company that he was employed by was really much get pretty much against what he was striving to do until they saw the uh, wisdom behind it. It was a pretty um, big and important loss to the gaming industry and the world of video game fans in general. And he will be missed. And he will always be appreciated for his involvement, involvement in um, the evolution in video games. Um, we thank you, Jerry. We thank you very much. Craig here, and uh, sadly, not with good news. Uh, this past Saturday, uh, April 9th, 2011, uh, Gerald Lawson died, and I'm sure many people don't know who that is, but um, he, was a, he was a real pioneer when it came to video games uh, and technology in general. He was the, f the only black member of the Homebrew Computer Club, um, which was sort of like this, this famous, like, computer hobbyist club, uh, you know, like Steve Jobs uh, was a part of that, and I think it was featured in the movie Pirates of uh, Silicon Valley. And um, he also made one of the first coin-op video games called Demolition Derby. It came out just after Pong. And uh, Lost even set it up so that uh, kids couldn't uh, trigger the, the micro-switch and get free plays, which was a problem with Pong. 